hello, how are you? Today I wanted to talk a little bit about my thyroidectomy story. Um, a few weeks back I shared about how I was diagnosed with Sjogren's Syndrome, which is an autoimmune disease that I was diagnosed with at age 20. But a little over a year before that, I had had my first kind of big health issue, which was a thyroid nodule. So your thyroid is a little butterfly shaped gland in your neck. Um, for reference, it's right about where that scar is. And your thyroid hormones affect everything from your weight to your appetite to your mood. So they're really important in your body's functioning. When I was 18, almost 19, I scheduled a physical with a new doctor. I was just moving on from pediatrics to kind of my adult doctor. So I used the one that my mom went to because she really liked her and I like her as well. And at the end of the physical examination, she palpated my neck. So at your next physical, watch for that portion of it and you'll see they just kind of run their fingers over your neck. And I thought nothing of it. I mean, it seemed like a normal thing for a doctor to do. Um, but afterwards she said, has anyone ever told you that you have a growth on your thyroid? So of course I was like, no, of course no one's ever told me that. If I knew that I had a growth in my neck, I would have told you about it. And so she treated it like it was no big deal. She was like, okay, it might be nothing, um, but just to be safe, let's get an ultrasound on it. So she scheduled me for an ultrasound and I went about a week later. And it's literally the same thing that if you've had a baby or you've seen movies of pregnant people, uh, when they have a little wand and they put the gel on your belly and they swipe the wand over it, they did the same thing just on my neck. And they didn't give me the results that day because as you also may know, the ultrasound techs aren't allowed to give any information. Um, you have to wait until someone reads the information and then they'll call you with it. So I waited a little bit longer and I got a call basically saying that the lump in my throat, the nodule, the tumor, whatever you wanna call it, was partially solid and partially liquid. And the fact that it was partially solid was concerning because if a tumor is gonna be cancerous, it's gonna be solid, cancer is solid. So mine was partially liquid, partially solid. So they said, there's a possibility that it's cancer. It's not definitely cancer, but we need to um, do a biopsy. So again, I scheduled that. I had to wait a couple of weeks and then I went in for the biopsy. Thyroid biopsies are not for the faint of heart. Legitimately, after my thyroid biopsy was one of the two times in my life that I was so close to passing out. Basically what you do is you lie back on a table and they kind of, I think they put like a little pillow beneath your neck and you kind of like, like you need to have your whole neck exposed, which is a very vulnerable part of your body. And so it feels like really strange to have it totally like out there. And then they take a hollow needle and they like numb it and stuff. And then they also have the ultrasound at the biopsy to kind of guide them of where to go because they want to do the biopsy of the solid part of the tumor. And so they put a hollow needle in your neck and um, they kind of like dig around a little bit. It sounds awful and, and the thought of it was worse than it was. I mean, if this is something that you have to get done, I want you to know it's really not that bad. They numb you and you, it just feels weird. It's not even really painful. It just feels so weird and I have anxiety so just the thought of it was like too much for me. But basically you can just feel, it's like when you go to the dentist and they give you Novocaine and you can hear the sound and maybe feel some pressure, but it doesn't hurt. It's just like that. So they stick a needle in and they like dig a little bit so like you can feel something's going on in, in your neck, which is like not a normal sensation, but it's not painful. Um, but when I was all done, you know, my neck had been back. So like, I feel like all the blood had rushed to my head or away from my head. And I stood up, like I sat up and they were like, okay, sit there for a second. And I was like, okay. And then I got up to walk away and my mom was with me and we were walking down the hallway towards the lobby. And I was just like, I went pale white and I was like, I have to sit down and I could feel the tunnel vision coming. Like my vision was like getting smaller and smaller, closing in. Like I was, I was going to pass out. Everything was going white. Um, but I sat down and the lovely nurses brought me graham crackers and apple juice. So all was fine. Um, and you just wear like a bandit on your neck for a day and then it's fine. It's, it's not a huge deal. Again, the mental part of it was the worst and I had to wait like another week for the results. And so this whole week, I'm, you know, emotional, I'm nervous, I'm freaking out a little bit, but I'm trying to keep up hope that it might be nothing. So then by this time, I think I was 19 because the tumor, they found it in I think June and my birthday was in July. So a couple of weeks had passed. So I was newly 19 
and I had an appointment with an endocrinologist to go over the results of the biopsy. And I went into the hospital in Boston with both my parents and we went into the room and they basically said the results of the biopsy were inconclusive. And of course I'm like, okay, well what the heck does that mean? And so the endocrinologist said um, the biopsy, they couldn't tell if it was cancer or not, but based on just different factors about my case and the tumor and what they had seen in the ultrasound and the biopsy, he said that he believed there was a 75% chance it was cancer and then obviously 25% chance it was benign. So he gave me the option of I could have just the one lobe or half of my thyroid that the tumor was on removed. But then if they figured out it was cancer, I would have to have the other lobe also removed or I could get the entire thing removed at once and only have one surgery without the risk of having to have another surgery. So I had to weigh my options because your thyroid is a vital gland, you can't live without it, so having the whole thing removed would leave me reliant on synthetic thyroid hormones for my entire life, which my mom actually already was due to her own thyroid issues um, years before. So I kind of like knew the gist of what that would be like and it didn't seem like a huge deal, you just take a pill every morning. But obviously it's better if you can keep half the gland. However, because the doctors were giving me a 75% chance it was cancer, meaning I would have to have the other lobe removed, and I was such an emotional wreck about having surgery at all, I was just beyond nervous, anxious about the thought of neck surgery, um, I decided that it would be better for me to have the whole thing removed at once, remove the risk of having a second surgery, that way if it was cancer, I wouldn't have to have another surgery. So I scheduled that, I think it was like a month out. So I spent that month just such an emotional wreck. I was crying every day, I was isolating myself. I'm pretty sure I stopped working, which I was just working part-time. I was, you know, early college at the time. But it was a really, really difficult time for me because obviously I had this dual um, nervousness of like, I was really anxious just simply about having a surgery and then also the fact that they were telling me it was probably cancer and if it was that would probably require more treatments than surgery like radioactive iodine which would kill off any extra cells in there or you know they take out lymph nodes during the surgery so if it had turned out that the cancer had spread at all um, that wasn't something that they would necessarily see till they were in there so it was incredibly nerve-wracking for me i went to surgery it was a day surgery so you go into the hospital they take your thyroid out, you stay in recovery for a little bit, and then you go home. So I didn't have to stay overnight, and I got to come right home. So they basically stitched it up with invisible, dissolvable stitches that I never had to get removed, and they covered that with starry strips, and I basically just had to keep the area dry. I couldn't get it wet for, I think, a week until I went back to the surgeon, and they removed just the starry strips and cleaned it all up, and then I had a little scar, and I put... Um, a scar ointment on for a year and also sunscreen every day and the scar is not that noticeable and as they reminded me as I get older it'll just blend in with my neck wrinkles so that's a nice reminder and within that week before I went back to the surgeon to get just my like starry strips removed um, I did get the results of my biopsy and it was not cancer, which was such an incredible relief. Um, I felt so, so lucky. Obviously, it was more likely than not that I had cancer, so it was amazing that I didn't. They told me I still did have some irregularities in the nodule, um, and they couldn't really tell me why that was, but they just said they would follow it closely. And I immediately started taking levothyroxin, which is the synthetic thyroid hormone you take every day. And they basically just guessed at the dosage in the beginning based on my age, sex, and weight. And it turned out that due to probably multiple factors, they had a really hard time regulating my meds. So after a while, I went on Synthroid, which is just like the name brand. And supposedly it's the same as levothyroxine, but for myself and for many people on online chat rooms where I found comfort, um, they found that Synthroid worked better. So once I went on Synthroid, I found that they were able to regulate it better, um, but for the first like full year after my surgery, I was wavering between hypothyroid, which is not enough thyroid hormone, and hyperthyroid, which is too much, and both sides have like really nasty consequences because like I said, it affects mood, appetite, weight, um, temperature so if you're hypothyroid you're like cold and sluggish and depressed and then if you're hyper you're like anxious and revved up and hot and your eyes bug out of your head 
And so I kind of like wavered back and forth between two extremes for about a year. But then I went on Synthroid and then that's also about the time I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. So my thinking is that potentially when I went on my Plaquenil, which I take to suppress my immune system or the autoimmune um, reaction in my immune system, I think that potentially when I went on that medication, it helped the Synthroid work better because whatever was going on with my autoimmune disease could have been affecting the metabolism of the thyroid medication. So anyway, the case was all a little bit complicated because of course the results were inconclusive and then even once it came back after surgery as not being cancer, they still said there was like weird irregularities and then obviously a year later I was diagnosed with what I understand to be a completely unrelated autoimmune disease. I never had an autoimmune thyroid disease. I never had Graves' disease or Hashimoto's. I never had autoimmune hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. My hyper and hypothyroidism resulted completely from just not being on the correct dosage of medication slash my autoimmune reaction potentially interacting with the metabolism of the medication and making it wonky. So that is the story of my total thyroidectomy, why I had my entire thyroid removed as a teenager, and how life has been since. So to anyone out there with thyroid issues, stay strong, I understand your pain. It's really difficult because it affects so much of your physical body and your mental health, and it can really make you feel like you're a crazy person. So I sympathize with you if you are there. If you have to have a thyroid ultrasound or biopsy or surgery, um, I'm here to tell you it's really not that bad, even though I freaked out about it for like months and I was such an emotional, anxious wreck. It was not that bad. Um, if you have any questions, of course, feel free to leave them in the comments or email me, molly at balancedandblissful.com. Check me out on any social medias. They'll be listed in one second. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day, week, year. Love you. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>